Welcome back to part two of my 2015 Tab Max S trailer shower tub stabilization. Um, if you haven't seen part one, you need to go back and see it so that you know what's going on here. But in general, what we're going to do is we're going to create a better support for the underside of that shower tub so that it doesn't crack. Um, so here we are today. I'm going to climb underneath as we talked about before. And we are going to, this is the box underneath the trailer that um, contains the P-trap um, for the shower. So we're going to take a screwdriver, we're going to take these screws off, there's five of them, take that cover off so we can get in there. Be back at you in a bit. Okay, so now we have the screws out of the box. And we can take the cover off. And now if you look up in there, you can see here's the trap and there's the bottom of the tub right in there. So what we're going to do is we're going to reach up and we're going to unscrew that uh, nut and that nut back there and take this trap out so that we can reach up in there. Let me get back at you. Okay, here we are back underneath. And we don't have to take off the entire trap. We just need to loosen this ring. The very top ring that connects. You'll see me spinning that here in a minute. It's the very top ring. See that spinning? That's the top ring that holds the shower drain in place. So once that's loose, we can go upstairs and take that shower drain off and that'll give us the access we need. So let's go do that. You don't have to take these off unless you want to. I'm not gonna need to, so okay, let's go. Okay, here we back, are back up on top. This drain's got a screw in the middle of it. We need to take that screw out. Well, you always find something wrong in your trailer. The previous owner had evidently lost the screw that holds that or the uh, bolt that holds that down, and they replaced it with a wood screw, and it's all rusted out and stuff. How ugly is that? Um, so you can see how it's rusted and stuff. That's not the screw that belongs in there, and now my threads down in there are probably really damaged. I may have to replace this whole, uh, whole assembly. Ugly. Ah, dude. That's the deal about buying an older trailer. Um, you never know what the previous owner's done to it. That's not what belongs there, that's for sure. So, I'm gonna go ahead and I'll show you how to okay. take Okay, normally in a shower um, drain situation, uh, the recommended method is you stick a pair of pliers down in there and then a screwdriver in the pliers and then you can twist this out. You can see how that'd work. But as I look down in here, I don't know if you can see that. Let me get a flashlight. That's that's pretty ugly. That's really flashing bad, isn't it, for you? Um, look down in there. See, that's broken. You see, I've got one, two, and the third little spine there is broken. Um, that's why this guy had that screw in there, because this whole thing is broken. Um, I don't know how I'm going to get that out now, because I think if I try to force any more on that, I think the rest of them will break. Um, really ugly, but I got to replace this anyway. 
so I'm going to do what I can to get it out of there, even if I need to cut it out. But um, that's my problem. In your pro in your situation, you're just going to stick a pair of pliers down in there, and you're going to stick in a screwdriver, and you're going to rotate it, and that'll spin that out. Um, no big deal, but in my case, I can't because it's already broken. <laughs> Uh, let's get at it. I'll be back to you when I've got this out of here. Okay, about an hour later, I've got that uh, uh, drain out of there. I had to... This is the drain. I had to take this Dremel tool and carefully cut it in half so that I could lift it out of that drain opening. Let me show you how that went. It went like that, and I cut it in half so I could lift it out. This is the base that screws into. So I'm going to have to replace this, but it's no big deal. This is just chrome-plated plastic, and I'll get a nice stainless steel one when I'm done. <laughs> so I won't have this problem again. But there's the opening. Let's get these tools out of here. Now, I'm not certain you're going to be able to see this, but remember we talked about this before, that I can push down on this tub. Well, the nice thing is now that this is open, I can put my spray foam tube tip all the way back in here, back into about the middle of this, and I can and it'll spread out and fill this whole area up. And the nice thing is, is now that it's, it's um, I can reach it, I can actually pull up on that. I don't know if you can see that, but if I pull, I can get almost, almost a half inch of, uh, of play in there. Now, what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna take the foam, stick the tube all the way back in here. It'll be nice that the can is upside down. Those that have used those spray cans before, we know that the can has to be upside down to get in here. I'm gonna slip it down in here as far as it'll go, and I'm gonna fill this. So, what we need to do, we need to talk about foam. You guys recognize this. This is called Great Stuff. You can find this at the box stores. Um, great Stuff comes in different flavors. It comes in a... Uh, small gap which this is this is one inch so this fills up to one inch gap it comes in a black can called a big gap filler that goes up to three inch now this is what's called a low density foam which means that the bubbles are big in it this is a high density foam which means it's got very very small bubbles we'll use this because number one i don't have to fill anywhere near a one inch gap I don't need to fill a three inch gap that the other would do. And I want it to be tough. This foam hardens into a pretty stiff material. So we're gonna go ahead and open this up, stick this tube down in here, lift this up, fill this whole area as much as I can in there. Now, when I'm done, the foam is gonna try to lift this tub up. I don't want this tub lifted up because I need it to slope down. So those of you that are scuba divers, ah, that is a sea soft lead shot scuba weight belt. And I'm going to put this weight belt on this tub to hold it down in place so that, that foam doesn't raise the top of this and cause me problems with drainage. We need this guy to be downhill there, not have it have a bump in the middle where it wouldn't drain anymore. That should make sense. So let's get at that. I'm gonna get the foam um, uh, tube set up and back in the place. We'll get back at you that, with the camera. At that okay, time. so here's the great stuff foam and you can see the tube. Now you can see that when I put that tube in there, I'm not, I'm gonna come about not quite to the middle, but that should be far enough. So I'm gonna go ahead then and lift on the fiberglass tub, slip the tube in between the tub and the uh, styrofoam blocks and start spraying it in. Uh, okay, you can bit. see I've got that tube laid into about this position, upside down. I'm gonna go ahead and pull the trigger and start filling this with foam. Back in a bit. Okay, I pulled that tube out and I sprayed about half a can in there until you can see it start to come back out the direction where I was. And you can feel this is already stiffer. It's not hardened yet. So now I need to put my weights down in the bottom of this to get this, uh, it's bowed a little bit and the weights will get it down flat again. Okay, we are 
all set in here. This is starting to firm up really nice. Um, much stiffer already than it was before. You can see where I'm gonna have to cut that foam out a little bit to make room for that pipe. And I need to get on um, Amazon and order one of these with a little nut on the bottom of it. So stay tuned for part three when this is all hardened up and that uh, we put that pipe back on in the bottom. Excellent. We'll see you next time in part three. Bye-bye. Drive safe.